everybody. My name is Holly Grapham, and today I'm going to talk to you about novel engineering. Um, I'm at MLTI Ambassador, and um, I've provided you with my contact information. Also, in the description section underneath this video, you'll find um, a link to a PDF that will enable you to get all the information that I provide and all the links today. So how did I get started with this thing called novel engineering? Um, well, I was a computer science teacher at Scarborough Middle School, and part of what we were doing was using the engineering design process as we were um, doing some physical computing um, with micro bits. And I really noticed that kids were engaged, they were using critical thinking and collaborating while they were working on this project. And I thought, how can I take that and bring it to my other classes? I also taught social studies. And that's when I discovered Novel Engineering, which is a tough university program that integrates the engineering process with literacy. Um, and here is a book and a link to their website. They offer webinars. You can get um, graduate credit course that they offer, a whole semester course on this. Um, I went to a two hour webinar and I bought the book. Um, and so from that pieces of research, I've sort of, a, you know, adopted this novel engineering and I've adapted it to um, really fit what I needed in my classroom. And so engineering design or novel engineering is really about problem solving, critical thinking, analysis. Kids are really going to activate these higher order thinking skills when um, they're uh, engaged in this um, type of project. So the novel engineering process is very similar to um, engineering processes that you might see in other classes. You're going to identify the problem. You're going to um, look at constraints. In this case, it's information about the characters and the setting. Um, you're going to consider possible solutions um, and constraints based on a variety of problems. Typically, you know, a novel doesn't have just one problem, but you can usually identify multiple problems. Um, from there, you're going to, students will start de designing some solutions um, and make a decision about what the best solution is that they want to, um, that they want to build on. And so then they construct a solution. Um, you're going to see in the traditional novel engineering and the Tufts program really focuses on the engineering part. So they're really looking for physical things that you can build. But I've adapted that and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit um, further on in this uh, video. Um, so once they've designed this solution, they're going to test it and get feedback. Um, and then they might make improvements. And this iterative process of testing, feedback, improvement can go through, you know, multiple times. It, typically, you know, it goes through for as long as you have time allows for um, within the constraints of what you've decided for um, how long this project is going to take. But I would say at least three or four, and it could possibly, some are really short and some are really long, um, but definitely need to allow time for this iterative process. That is critical um, for, in, for the engineering or any design thinking process. And then once they get a solution um, that is pretty finished, I mean, solutions are never finished, right? Because you can still get more feedback. Um, they will, there's some sort of uh, sharing, cum, uh, culminating sharing activity and students um, share their designs. So this is very similar to other related design processes. And I've kind of worked with these as well. And so um, that background sort of helped me 
um, kind of meld all of these together, if you will, um, in projects that I've done with novel engineering. So there's just a simple problem solving um, process that's very student centered. And you can see here that is pretty much the same idea. There's a problem, students um, ideate for a solution, they pick the best solution, they build something. Um, in some cases, it's a physical, tangible thing. It might be something that is more um, theoretical, if you will. Um, and usually these prototypes are, you know, just like any other prototype, they're not necessarily um, real life prototypes, but usually there's some sort of scale process. Um, and then they uh, evaluate, iterate, and share. So all of, while they're a little bit different and they have different emphases, they're, they're very closely um, related. And so the one on the right here is uh the is a design thinking process that was brought out of stanford university their design thinking school um and so uh, their real pro their number one thing is the empathize which in the novel engineering i feel like that really comes through because you are really getting into the problems of the character and the setting so you automatically sort of activate that empathize piece um, that you might not see in some of the other um, engineering processes. Um, so accessing prior knowledge. So I'm going to talk about the tale of two novels. So the first part that I do is the um, activate reviewing the engineering design process in a novel way like throwing a taco party so this is a little video that goes through each of the steps of the engineering design process but it's through the idea of throwing a taco party so you're if kids already have some experience um, my students take um, tech and engineering um, sixth through eighth grade and they've had some stem classes um, in the elementary grades so they've sort of seen this engineering design process but this is a way to look at it in kind of a novel way and help them start thinking about that it beyond the traditional engineering design process there's other ways that you can use that process in a unique way and throwing a taco party is one and then the next one is um, exploring novel engineering through a picture book. And I use Muncha 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 because it has, um, at, you know, Farmer McGreely here is actually building things um, to solve problems. Um, this is a story and characters that are easily to analyze and empathize with allowing students to really focus on the novel engineering process and not have to be really thinking about um, the characters in the book in a in a real deep way and students of all ages love engineering um, picture books uh, and I was at a computer science um, across the curriculum workshop a few months ago and um, something that was really what an aha moment, a light bulb moment for me, even though I think intuitively I was doing some of this, but it really made it explicit for me is that um, when we're teaching something new, like a design thinking process, or we're bringing in new technology, um, you want to make sure that the students are able, that that's their focus and that you're not also bringing in that new technology, that new design process with some other new content, curricular content. And then conversely, if you're bringing in, if you're looking at some new curricular content, you don't want students to be learning some new technology at the same time. So if they're learning a new technology, in this case, a new process, you want to have them not work with um, curricular content that they're familiar with or activate some kind of prior knowledge. In this case, it's a picture book. Kids are, you know, uh, are pretty adept at like reading picture books. And 
if you are really introducing new content, you want to make sure that students already have um, have prior knowledge, have worked with the technology that you want to bring in as part of um, maybe a culminating project so that they're not learning the new technology and the content at the same time. So while I'm reading um, the picture book, students um, record problems and solutions and give feedback um, from this chart for Mr. McGreely and the button and the bunnies. So the bunnies are trying to get into the garden and eat Mr. McGreely, McGreely's vegetables. And he designs various ways to keep the bunnies out, but the bunnies keep getting in. So um, this is just sort of a simple way of the feedback is really simple. Was it successful or unsuccessful and why? And this will just really start students um, kind of looking at um, problem solutions within a novel in a new way. Um, and then I review the novel engineering process with them. Um, and then a class assignment um, is that they would have to design another solution that M Mr. McGreely could have been could have built because eventually the bunnies still get into the garden um, and think about the constraints and if the solution makes sense and they couldn't harm any bunnies in the process of all of this. Um, and so for the sake of time, because this was really just a practice exercise to really just get into the, um, the process of novel engineering, I, I didn't have students build their own um, solutions. They just either wrote them down or they made drawings of solutions. Um, and then we came back and as a class discussion as bunnies, so the students were thinking as a bunny, they provided um, feedback on the on their classmates design, which so it's from the class, the design was from Mr. McGreely's perspective. The feedback was from the bunny perspective, like, will they work? Why or why not? Um, and this is a great opportunity to practice this constructive feedback in kind of a low stakes way. Um, so the book that I have used at Scarborough Middle School um, was A Long Walk to Water. Um, it is one of the recommended books in the novel engineering, but um, I actually had this idea with this book in mind prior to really digging into the novel engineering. This book is um, one of a, a group of books that students have an opportunity to read as part of our um, immigration unit in social studies. And so the steps that I go through when I'm doing this is that, um, first of all, we're going to really get into the book, right? Because you have to have all of the knowledge of the book and be thinking about problems throughout the process of the book in order to really do the engineering design thing. So there, in this case, there were some whole class lessons that they needed to have to make more real world context. So I had to talk, you know, I did a lesson on push and pull and some geography and the you know, the Lost Boys of Sudan. And so um, throughout the book, we kind of looked at all of these factors um, to develop some prior knowledge. And then um, we're reading that we read the novel. And as they're reading the novel, they have this um, problem tracker similar to the one I did in Muncha, Muncha, Muncha. So um, in each, as they read along, they record what chapter um, it is in, um, and there could be multiple problems in, mul in um, one chapter, and there may be no additional problems in another chapter. Um, but this kind of will help them know where to go back and reference the novel if they need to. Um, so what was the problem? Who does this affect? Um, how does it affect them? And what could you design to solve the problem? Um, I think that while they're in it and reading the novel, it's much easier for them to be thinking about these questions as opposed to, you know, reading the whole novel and then trying to go back and fill these in. Um, they don't have to choose from this solution chart. This is really just to start activating their thinking about 
solving these problems that they're going to identify as they read the book. Um, and in this case, for a long walk to water, um, it, you know, to differentiate for different readers, um, there is a picture companion book, Naya's Long Walk, and students would be able to um, read that and still get um, enough from the um, problem and solution options that they need to work with the activity. And so then step three, even though I mentioned this earlier, I typically don't bring in the design thinking, the engineering part with the taco party and the muncha, 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 because if I do that before they read the book, then it kind of gets lost. I really want them to focus on the book um, and the and finding problems and thinking about solutions. I mean, I do introduce the um, design thinking process, the novel engineering process, but I don't go through all of this. Or if conversely, I, you could repeat this. Um, but I really recommend that you kind of do this in this order. So we go through the taco party, we do the muncha, muncha, muncha activity. This usually takes, you know, one to two days. Um, and then I specifically introduce the design engineering challenge for a long walk to water and have students select a design um, project from the choice board. Now, this is something that I do in my classroom whenever possible. I just really feel like offering students choice um, really uh at, makes it more engaging for them, more relevant for them. Um, so wherever I can offer um, voice and choice, I do. And then so in this case, um, I made a choice board. Now, I made this choice board prior to doing the whole problem solution chart, just based on um, experience of what students are going to come up with some typical um, problems that students come up with. You could do this, you could wait till and go through the problem and solution chart and generate a choice board that way. Um, you could do this and that, there's, you know, however you want to bring this into your classroom to give students opportunities to, um, to determine which, uh, which problem it is that they would like to solve because there are multiple problems um, in the book. So um, the only, uh, I also always leave a student generated idea. So, and part of that, this melding of this is that, um, you know, sometimes students are paralyzed by not knowing what to do. And so by offer them some choices, but the students that are, don't like that constraint, I offer them an opportunity to generate their own. The only thing is, is I, I say that I have to approve it. Um, and the, the designs must be plausible and authentic based on the content context of the book. So um, when they are designing a container for Naya, while they might use cardboard and duct tape in their prototype, they have to identify that what are the real, what would be the um, materials that Naya would have access to, to build something like this container. So they have to really kind of think a little bit. I um, mean, this is how they're really showing how much they understand in um, the, the characters in the book and the setting of the book. Um, sometimes it requires a little bit of research, um, but that's okay. Uh, so here's some popular things that I have done. Um, and as you can see, the art installation is, um, that would be a physical thing. The water filtration, the container, the shoes, those would all be physical engineering, um, type things. But then there is the PSA. And for me, that's really where I bring in the design thinking piece because this is while they are actually creating something it's not necessarily um, a physical tangible product but they certainly um, can go through the design thinking process the engineering process um, to create um, these public service announcements 
Um, along the way, I have on-demand mini lessons because as students are choosing different problems and solutions, they may need additional information. Um, and this is where you can kind of support them by having it be on demand. Um, students who are not need, do not need that additional information are not, you know, kind of forced to sit there and listen to it. So um, as you can see uh, back here, when I give them a problem solution chart, each of these are linked to a separate slide deck um, that gives them some more um, I'll put videos or I'll put links into some research areas. Um, you could also uh, have a book collection or there's lots of um, examples of different things, however you want to do this. Um, but I would, I would recommend that you have it on some sort of on demand way where students can access it the students that need it can access it when they want to um it, if you've got younger students and you're kind of feeling like i'm not sure if they can really do the on demand you could do mini lessons with groups of students um you know within the first couple days of the project if that was how you wanted to do it again there's lots of ways to um to do this, I'm just really sharing what I found to work um, in a logical way. So at this point, everything now is really student centered, right? They, they're the ones choosing the project. They're the ones doing the additional research. Your job is to really just facilitate this and sort of make sure that they're moving along at a pace that's going to um, fulfill your time requirements for this. Um, if a student, if they've create, decided this is something that's not material that you've already curated, they might need um, help with that um, too. Uh, and, and as they are going through this process, I have a couple of documentation things that I do. Um, for the first thing that I do is this engineering um, is an engineering notebook and it is a slide deck that um, I will actually show you that uh, through each slide has um, a piece of the engineering design process. So for instance, slide one is the problem and each student, um, even if they're working with collaborating with another student, which that I should have mentioned that that's possible. You can do this with each student creates their own project. It could be groups of students, however you want to set that up. Um, but each student should have their own engineering notebook because this is going to actually be part of the assessment piece. So that is one piece of documentation and this documents the um, the engineering design process. So each of these are step in the process and how well. So I will be looking um, for students. Did they follow that um, engineering um, design process? Um, the next piece of uh, documentation is a daily reflection log. Um, for me, I did not have students every single day. Um, so I found that these reflection logs were helpful. Um, it, and it also keeps students. So I have a way to myself as a teacher kind of give some formative assessment feedback as they go along um, based on how they what their answers were in the daily reflection logs. And I also really recommend if you can do any of these documentations digitally, I'm um, certainly you could have paper copies of this, but the upside of the digital copies of, of any of this documentation is they could add, they can add photos. They could add a video that they took. They can add so much more to the documentation um, that the digital that they could not do um, in a paper copy. So I usually have them take um, a photo of their progress, um, 
you know, so that when they come back the next day, if something were to happen to their design or they had to disassemble some things, it really just kind of is a record. So when it comes to assessments, speaking of assessments, these are the things that I look for. First of all, the engineering notebook. Did they complete all the steps in the engineering design process? You know, sometimes kids like want to skip right to building something, but they haven't really flushed that out as well. And going through the process, um, each of the steps is really um, something that I want them to go through. Uh, and then the plausibility of the design based on the context of the book. Um, feedback provided to classmates design. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So as is, again, we talked about that iteration piece. So they need to get feedback from someone and it, it can and should come from you, the teacher, but it's also, I think, great to get kids to provide feedback to each other. And so when I'm doing this, I have multiple feedback sessions um, you know, it's, uh, and so how they give feedback to their classmates is also part of an assessment that I do. And then their reflection logs. And so, um, a rubric might look like this, um, in my, in my school, I had to, um, provide a numerical grade. So adding the points in really made sense for me. Um, and then um, there are some other formative assessments as they're reading the book. And, and so you can keep those separate. You could keep the reading of the novel and any, um, uh, any activities that you would do like around vocabulary or, um, you know, closed reading activities that could be separate, um, but it is still connected. So I have these um, formative assessments as they're reading the novel that would be part of um, the assessments of the whole thing. And then I use TAG. I, I'm sure that there are many other types of peer feedback that is very similar, right? Tell me something you like, ask a question, give a suggestion. I, I just happen to follow TAG, um, but use some sort of feedback protocol for for peer feedback um, is helpful for students so that they're not this is to kind of get away from just being oh yeah i really liked that like you kids need um very specific feedback if they're going to make changes and iterate their design and so design thinking a novel in engineering is not just for novels or ELA classes, as I've shown here. This is something I did actually in social studies class, um, but the concept was developed as an integration of engineering and literacy. So it's um, think you could also use it in other um, types of reading. So you could have nonfiction literature, um, especially biographies where you could have them think about some of the problems, um, look at the solutions that they did and, and maybe come up with some other solutions. Um, it could be science articles or nonfiction, historical fiction. Um, it could be authentic math and science pro uh, problems and you're going to have them actually, um, you know, go through the engineering design process. Um, it could be social learning issues where they're doing some research and reading. So any way that they are activating some literacy skills and then you can connect it to um, this engineering um, process or design thinking process. Um, and I will, there's a couple links of some different examples. One is a service learning and one is a history and science um, com combination about redesigning um, the Mayflower. Oops, sorry about that. And some additional resources. And again, um, I will uh, provide a um, in the description 
down below there will be a link that you can go to in the PD and there'll be a PDF and you can get all of these things. Um, also, I want to mention, I'm going to go back here, um, that uh, if you would like to get contact hour credits uh, in, in the, um, when you go through the PDF at the end, the last slide, there'll be a link to a form that has just a few quick questions. And from there, it will give you a link to get um, some contact hours. So this will be um, one contact hour if that is something that you are looking. My contact information is uh, will be in the PDF. And please feel free to contact me if you have any questions or um, you would like me to come and do something with you around novel engineering. Thank you.